What is up folks, Solar Strike here. Today we'll be covering a strange version of Windows XP, known as the Windows XP Starter Edition, a cost reduced but heavily limited version of Windows XP that was sold in developing nations such as India, Latin American territories such as Brazil, Argentina, and Chile, Malaysia, and Russia, among other regions. This version of XP was introduced in late 2004 by Microsoft to serve as an introduction for novice computer users in these regions, many of whom had no or very little experiences with computers before. Working with various governments of these nations, the company launched the product in two test markets in late 2004 before being expanded to other nations in 2005. Unfortunately, despite Microsoft's ambitions, the product never really went anywhere sales-wise, only selling 1 million copies by late 2006. But what happened that caused this version of Windows to fall into obscurity, and how did this version come to be? Well, let's take a look at Windows XP Starter Edition, perhaps one of Microsoft's more intriguing experiments to get the operating system internationally. The origins of this edition date back to June 2003, when Microsoft began working with Thailand's IT ministry to provide 1 million lower cost PCs for Thai citizens. Once in the homes of these customers, representatives of the company realized that the interfaces that had become intuitive to the industrial world in the years prior seemed totally alien and complex to these new users, confusing them in the process. As a result of these struggles, they needed to work on a version that would seem more intuitive to these users without the complex features most of these users didn't necessarily need. And work began in late 2003 on this version. By mid-2004, the product was ready to be tested, and a pre-beta version of the operating system was sent to about 600 Thai and Indian families, with them relying on extensive feedback from these families to improve and modify the OS wherever needed through occasional check-ins with these families, a sharp departure from Microsoft's usual beta testing strategy. After this period of testing, XP Starter Edition was first released in Thailand and India in late 2004 as part of a five-country pilot program, before being expanded in early 2005 to three other nations thanks to promising initial results, and continued to be expanded throughout the rest of the year costing roughly 30 US dollars in these regions. Microsoft also announced a Longhorn version of the Starter Edition would be made for when that operating system released. However, when domestic journalists found out the existence of this version, they became skeptical over the effectiveness of this version due to its limitations imposed on users compared to other editions. Microsoft responded to these claims by noting their research on user experience in these regions. So how is Windows XP Starter Edition like in the modern era? Well, let's take a look. So anyways, um, yeah, this is the live portion. So anyways, this is, uh, Windows XP Starter Edition. Um, anyways, um, as you can see from the, um, as you can see, um, there's a background here um, mentioning the Windows Starter Edition. And as you can see from here, it's a weird classic version of the theme. And notice the icons are a lot bigger, like including the mouse cursor, which is pretty big, if I do say so myself. Um, anyways, apparently there there was supposed to be a limit of a uh, the amount of resolution that um, uh, you are only limited to 10 to 1224 by 768, but in VMware it's um, um, you don't really have that bug. We don't really have that here, although I believe like that was this is because we're running this on a virtual machine. So anyways, um, as you can see, this wallpaper here is um, basically basically here, and that's the only thing. Although, um, 
Although, you do get the, um, I guess you get the default things here, but in other versions of Windows XP Starter Edition, i.e. not this copy that I've got here, in, you get different, you, you get different wallpapers with different versions of, uh, different countries on wherever, where this was installed. Um, and such as like, um, Malaysia, you get, uh, Malaysia, you get, you get one copy, here, you got one wallpaper. India, you get another wallpaper, such and such, and yeah, let's change the language. Hmm. Let's see. I gotta go add that. Huh? It's not here. Um. Let me let me see if I can. familiar with Windows XP um, languages. Huh. Yeah, like, that was supposed to be a wizard here. Now, if you look into the getting starter here, you can see some info about this um, version of Windows right here. So, this version of, this version of Windows XP Starter Edition, I... The one that I was using didn't really work out as well as you just saw in the lake right there. That was that was the version I was trying to do. But in this version, I patched it up to version I patched it up to service pack three. And, but as you can see here, look at the copyright date 2004 and an XP starter edition right there. Um anyways, let's look at this HTML document. Yeah, but, but, um, the first one I was using didn't really, I couldn't actually find a, find a working serial, so I had to go find a, uh, I had to go find another image online. So it was slightly modified from the original, but, hey, it works, I guess. Part one, learning about the basics. Definitely not, nice. definitely not. Weird. <laughs> mouse. So, yeah, it's like basic, basic pure instincts, like as you can see. But yeah, let's try something here. Um, let's probably start. Let's talk about the most infamous part of uh, Windows XP Starter Edition. Oh shoot! There's no pinball. Why did they drop pinball? Oh well. I can at least listen to Beethoven. Kidding. So anyways. Two. Why am I counting up? Don't figure it out. Anyways, what version of the player is in here? Nine, so. Let's not make this so big. Maybe let's open up. It's not here either. Screw. Mess with Beethoven. You mess with, mess with my pinball. What is wrong with you, Microsoft? Oh well. I guess we'll try. I guess we'll try. Let's play this getting started.
version of Macro Media Flash Player 7. That's interesting. Welcome to the Windows XP Starter Edition Getting Started videos. Each video will help you explore your computer and learn more about what you can do on your computer. If you want to pause a video at any time, use your mouse to move the cursor and click this pause button on the video control bar. Mm. When you're ready to resume, simply click it again. I see. To move, and at any time, click the... When you return to the main menu, you will see that you are currently watching this video. If you are a new computer... Remember, the best way to become familiar with your computer is to explore and learn as you go. So yeah, like, I, that makes sense. Yeah, you're still going over there. Um, let's open up the... Let's open up the Windows Explorer here and... Let's open up Calculator. And we got... Alright, we got... We got four windows open. Let's try opening paint. Then it comes up with this message. With Windows XP Starter Edition, you can run three programs at the same time. To open another pro open another program, save your work, and close one of the open programs and try again. Show this message as a notification in the future. Alright. Which sounds like a total bummer. But, yeah. You can only run three. You can only run, like, three programs at one time. So. Let's. Oh, let's. Let's try opening paint. Yes. XP. Even in. Even in this. Even in this Super River Reduced version. It's still the good old paint I love. So, anyways. Masterpiece of a drawing. Masterpiece of an artist is like. Let's see. It's like. It's like the sun. Or flames. Really bad versions of the flames, but. Hey! It's a. Beautiful masterpiece, I guess say so myself so let's open an, another window of paint let's try something else two and then one more one more window of paint here and let's do a big fat wait that's too ugly there we go that's three so, three windows of paint open. Now let's try a fourth. You can only have three windows open within each program. To open another window, save your work and close one of your open windows. Oh. Even in this version. Uh, yeah, so... Effectively, that's how the notification version of this works. Um, yeah, that, that does seem pretty cruddy. Um, anyways, let's just... <laughs> sure. Sure. No. Yeah, but... So, yeah. Only three programs, and only three... And only three, three versions of a. And only three win, only three windows, and only three programs. That leaves nine windows total. Oh yeah, and you may have noticed I've only I only have a set. I have I have this set at 119 gigs. Um, that's because Windows XP Starter Edition only runs. At only is allowed to run at 120 gigs maximum, which is already, which is already starting to get, starting to get somewhere around the the average hard disk, maybe a little, 
little smaller, but I honestly don't really know the average system requirements for Lake 2004. Oh, and this watermark here also exists. This is Windows XP Starter Edition. But you may have also noticed there is Windows Explorer. Hmm. Let's see if we can run Firefox. Can we? Can we run on Firefox? But can we? Can we run Firefox on this thing? Yes, in this day and age, even even Google works on. Even Google works on. Oh, that was, that was going to be like pretty exciting. can actually do this and like kind of like break the one thing I was going to be mentioning. This actually works. I'm gonna be like surprised. I have done this I installed IE6 in many years now. Same version from Service Pack 3, but can I actually do this? Oh my goodness, it's actually working! <laughs> How the heck did I do that? How? Oh, like, that's that's amazing. I can actually do this. It's like, obviously, like, Firefox is like way, way out of its league, but that's actually working. Holy smokes. Like, anyways, yeah, like, that's a thing I wasn't expecting to do. Because, um, home networking actually doesn't, there isn't a lot of home networking components in this, um, in this version of Windows XP. You don't really get any, um, networking across machines and stuff. I figured like most of the network stuff would be stripped out, but I guess enough is there to keep um keep get me to get me um Firefox at least. So yeah. That was very interesting. Um in other versions of the uh, also um Localization was given a really big overhaul, unfortunately, since I really cannot read most of the, cannot really read most of the languages, at least at this time. Um, I don't really have a way of testing that, like those localizations, but you can probably, you can probably guess, like for a program like this, you you'll probably see a lot of. Uh, Things like that. So yeah, that should do. Oh, um, let's actually take a look at the. Do we not have that? There we are. Huh? <laughs> you can see. You know, like. AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. Oh yeah, 512 megs. You're only limited to that as well. Any more and... I don't know what happens, but apparently that causes it to break. And it runs on my 3700X. Like that... Like, obviously this is a VM, but... 
This is like way overkill for the Saurons and Durons this was made for. So yeah. So that was certainly a cutback version of Windows XP, but it made sense to the budding computer users of these nations, right? Unfortunately to Microsoft, the effectiveness of XP Starter Edition proved to be limited, only selling 1 million copies by October 2006. So what happened? Well, this came down to the black market. As in many of these regions, pirated copies of Windows XP Professional were more popular and widely available to more adept computer users of these regions, and costed significantly less, with only the cost of manufacturing of the CD, down to 70 US cents at this point, being factored into the cost compared to the 30 US dollars that XP Starter costed. Despite this, Microsoft considered the edition a successful experiment to help out users of these regions for getting into the Windows ecosystem, and as such another starter edition of Windows would be made for Windows Vista, released early the next year, and the same would be done for Windows 7, with updated or modified new basics to fit the computing needs of 2007 and 2009, respectively. However, the versions of security today, no doubt caused by logistical issues, makes it an oddball in the long history of Windows, and remains nothing more than a curious experiment in today's world. <laughs>